our support is unlike anything I've ever been a part of. And so that, that's the, awesome. probably the most special thing. And right. one last thing, it would complete my world if one day, someday, I can get a one-on interview with you. Just, just throw it out. We got it right now. Just <laughs> 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 it's just, it's just you and a couple of things. That just happened. So. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Happy birthday, Alicia. Alicia. Alicia, happy birthday, Felicia. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Everyone sing happy birthday, right? <laughs> One, two, three. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Excited to, you know, we started Avengers in 
uh, two months and to get back on set. We're all going to meet in, in London and, and shoot there and for four months. So that's I'm excited to get back together with everyone and, and hang out and catch up. I can't wait. Thank you. Thank you. You're awesome. Thank you. You too. You're awesome. You're awesome. You're awesome. You're awesome. You're awesome. Um, I have another question in the Frank Wade chat app. What are your future projects you're working on that we can see coming soon? Um, I did a movie with uh, Michael Mann last year, um, which is all, uh, you know, the thriller and all in deep in the cyber world, the cyber terrorism world, and is um, a pretty intense, detailed look at, at, the, at that world. And Michael Mann is just a master of detail, and, and uh, I'm sure you've seen many of his films. So that, that, that's coming out, I think, at the end of the year or next year. And then I did another film with Ron Howard called In the Heart of the Sea, which was uh, based on the book. Uh, it was the true event that inspired Herman Melville to write Moby Dick. So it's, it's that adventure story, but the true version of it. And, um, that was, that, was, that was a lot of fun. We shot last year in, in the Canary Islands, the shooting was beautiful. And it's a giant whale attacks a whaling ship. And these guys get lost at sea for 90 days. And, uh, pretty intense. So they both come out around Christmas time, I think, or next year. Is Ron Howard like a really hands on type director? Does he let you just sort of find your voice and go with it? Uh, a bit of both, you know. He, he obviously comes to the table with you know, all his expertise and experience, but is uh, very welcoming and arms open to new ideas and other people's opinions. So he's very collaborative like that. Some directors will come in and you know say this is how it is and this is the target, whereas he's um, a lot more free flowing. Yeah, Batman. Any Avengers movies or any scenes that you would regret doing? That I did regret, or the new ones, or the old one. The old one. No, I love them. Especially being punched in the head by the Hulk. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I, I love working on that. That was the first time I'd met all those actors and those characters, and I think for all of us it was a real pinch yourself moment going, wow, this is actually happening. Yeah. Hi there. In the dark world, um, when you put on the uh, your hammer on the Oh, the hanger. Oh, yeah. Do you think it's going to fall off or something? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know how that we're uh, rehearsing that scene, and uh, and I walked into the door and I was, I was sort of standing up. What, what does Thor do? He walks into a house. You know, what, what does he do with his hammers? He's standing there. You know, and, I, and I sort of jokingly hung it up on the hook, and a few people in the crew started laughing, and you know, and then I said, oh, we should just we should do that the scene. And, and then everyone's like, no, 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 no. Actually, yeah, do it. <laughs> So, I'm glad we did it. It was, it was a funny moment, but uh, it's a, yeah, it, it felt strange being in that costume, in a normal house, not in Asgard. <laughs> Thank you. It seemed very practical to hang it up. Like <laughs> but yeah, so I was worried it wasn't going to rip. It should have ripped the wall out. Technically, <laughs> the hook was worthy. That's true. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, it's all, it's all challenging, you know, um, 
do you want to make it as truthful as possible and, and do it justice, especially something like law that comes with this this kind of following. Um, I mean, you know, I, I, movies that I just named then, and, and you know, so Lord of the Rings was. something that, um, you know, I was thinking about going into just because, uh, you know, I love the work that my parents do and, and, and you know, inspired by what they did. Um, but yeah, I don't know, I never had another option really. I just kind of, you know, threw all the eggs into this basket and you know, hope for the best. <laughs> awesome, thank you. Cool. Thanks. <laughs> yes, sir. In the recent Star Trek film reboot, you played uh, James T. Kirk's father. Would you like to reprise that role? And if so, uh, how would you do it? Well, I don't know. Um, <laughs> I kept wondering if JJ was going to bring me back in some way and do another flashback. But it'd be strange now. If I, you'd flash back to see his father and be older than when he was when he died. <laughs> <laughs> like, very strange. It's tiny, whiny stuff. <laughs> 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 because you asked if... Because, yeah, we'll tell Jai Jai. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. You know, the comedy in Thor is so spot on, but that character could easily be like overbearing or too much to kind of digest. Was that a conversation that you guys had on, had early on, that we have to make this very light at times? Yeah, and totally, you know, from the first film, Ken run to set that up, and, and it was, um, you know, thankful for that. You know, that sort of foundation, that building block. And, and yeah, I think any of these films, the fantasy films, especially the Marvel films, what's so great is totally as a great balance of humour which allows you to buy into that fantastical world. No matter how, you know, dramatic and big it gets, it's, you're having a good time, you know. It should feel like a roller coaster and you should have a laugh. And, and um, you know, we have great writers who kind of make sure they thread that in there. And, and, and we all have a great amount of fun doing it. And a lot of the, you know, that humor that comes from that interaction set. So. Does that make you want to go for a straight comment? I'd like to, yeah. Yeah, I'd love to do a comedy. Yeah. Yeah. Fun, fun, fun. Hello, Chris. I'm Carla. And I wanted to know, if you don't mind answering, what is your favorite childhood memory? Uh, my favorite childhood memory? Probably surfing with my dad and brothers after school and before school. And sometimes when I should have been at school. <laughs> You know, that, that was, and, and you're in the age where kind of nothing else exists besides that moment and, and that, that hobby. And, uh, yeah, that, that, that was that probably my best memories. All right, thank you. Yeah. That's a nice question. Yeah, that's a good question. Hi there. Sorry, I'm not um, So I know you took a lot of pictures today. I want to know how many times you got asked to take your shirt off and will you take your shirt off? <laughs> I didn't get asked, but, uh, and these buttons, I can't get them on yeah. they glued together. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> My wife. Yeah. What's one of your most favorite things about
about acting? Um, just that that fantasy and the make believe of it all, and you know, it's, it's it is like being a big kid again. It's, it's you know, it reminds me of playing, especially four, you know, in the backyard and imagining you're part of some other world, except the you know, the sets were a lot more expensive than my backyard was. <laughs> and and, and the, you know, the weapons and the toys you get to play with were a lot cooler. Um, yeah, but it's that, it's make believe, you know, I think we're all big kids essentially. Any time you get to, <laughs> you know, drum that home yourself, it's, it's, it's a big bonus. How old are you? Ten. Ten. Has the impact sunk in that, you know, you were a nerd growing up, you had all these, you know, heroes in the movies that you were watching. Has it sunk in that you are now making this impact on this generation? Yeah, I mean, every time it, 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 it blows you away, you know, it, it um, uh, you know, really, it doesn't get any more normal. And it's, it's um, just as exciting as the first time. And, and to think that, uh, you know, there were people I looked up to and still, still are as a kid, and then now that, you know, doing that to someone else is a very a special feeling. Yeah, cool. Now we have the five minute warning, sir. You, uh, first off, thanks for uh, giving the mic to the young lady there. Oh, it's my pleasure. <laughs> uh, kind of a quick question, actually. Um, as an Australian uh, living in America, do you have a favorite like Australian thing or stereotype that you like to play up with? Uh, I don't know, even like a, a kind of a touristy thing. And don't say surfing. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, besides traveling with the koala and a kangaroo, <laughs> I, I, ride, I ride a kangaroo to auditions. <laughs> Straight down the aisle. It's really busy in LA. It just counts. <laughs> You know a producer is trying to make that movie happen right now. That's the next film. And Vegemite. Anyone ever had Vegemite? Oh. I love it. Thank you answered the question. Thank you. Hi, I'm Tina. Hello. And I have a question. I was thinking. I often forget that you and Liam actually are from Australia. Sometimes in interviews I'm like, whoa, you have an Australian accent. But I was just curious to know if um, they base the people of Asgard, did they base their accent off of yours actually? I was curious about that. Yes, Asgardians are traditionally from Australia. <laughs> <laughs> Some very upset Scandinavians out there. <laughs> Uh, no, we all do sort of a, it's, it's called mid-Atlantic sort of accent, which is kind of from nowhere. It's kind of a slight English kind of Lord of the Rings, you know, everyone sort of sounds neutral in some way, and, and that's what we all kind of aim for, just to find a generic kind of, you know, uh, similarity, I guess, because we didn't, you can't do Nordic a accents if you speak in English, it doesn't make sense. Yeah. And, you, know, you, know, you can't do straight American or straight Australian, you know, so we kind of invented <laughs> an accent, I guess. I see. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, little man. If Loki was your brother, then why was he attacking you in the Avengers? <laughs> <laughs> Misunderstood, I guess. Yeah, no. I didn't realise he had such a dislike for me. And um, yeah, I'm not sure. He uh, he's a little bit evil, I think, <laughs> and a little bit good. So that's the tough thing. You know, you keep forgiving me. Tough. Do you have any brothers or sisters? Uh, I have two sisters. Same thing. Sometimes you just get the fight. <laughs> Except in this case, he was trying to destroy the earth. But everything's just a little bigger now. The other, including the way they dress. Good question, though. Good question. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hello, my name is Brian. Uh, first of all, my wife and sister-in-law want me to tell you to say hi. Hello. Uh, with the uh, Marvel Universe expanding, the Marvel Comic Universe expanding, and uh, including the television shows, Agents of Marvel or Agents of Shield, how much do you, as a fan, follow that and all the growing mythology and interconnected? Storylines. Yeah, all of it. Uh, you know, I mean, I, you know, 